what you guys feel I've done, you know, in the course of the year. And pretty sure you guys expect the elevation of my game uh, to to a point where, you know, we get to the sixth championship. And you know, that's part of my challenge. All right, the 1988 draft lottery was held at halftime of the Bulls Pacers game. This for the number one pick, if anybody wants it this year in the June draft. The excitement and the drama was building as Russ Granick runs down the selection. The top three pick. The third pick. Goes to the Denver Nuggets. That means the Clippers have won the lottery. The second pick. Goes to the Vancouver Grizzlies. And that means that the first pick in the 1998 NBA draft goes to the Los Angeles Clippers. It should have been Denver, right? They've got the worst record. There's the rundown for those who really care. Clips will go one, Vancouver, Denver is three, and on down they go. But the, the worst record in basketball, the, the Denver Nuggets did not get to the number one pick. All right, let me go back to baseball. Kansas City at Boston, and I still find the Red Sox a unique story because they're winning and hanging right behind those Yankees. Mo Vaughn swinging the hot bat and also playing some defense. Diving stop there to get Jose Offerman. The Royals up 2-1 in the fifth. Darren Lewis pokes one. Solo shot to tie the game at two. Bottom of the sixth and the rookie, Lou Marloni, who's Nomar Garcia, Pires replacement. Not bad. Long single to the left. Larry Sutton slips. And Troy O'Leary scores from second. We're tied at 3-3 after a sack fly to go ahead. Darren Lewis's infield single brings home Maloney to add some cushion to the Red Sox beat the Royals today 5-3. To Here's some more scores. Tampa Bay over Baltimore. Detroit beat Anaheim 4-3. Aaron Seeley 9 Ks. His seventh win. Texas over Cleveland. Oakland wins in Chicago. And the late game tonight, Toronto beat Seattle 4-3. to The Mets continue their West Coast swing and Today, they would send Al Leiter to the hill, and the Giants countered with Mark Gardner. Gardner won a six and set a two-thirds, struck out seven, his first win since the 21st of April. He gave away the winner early here. Yeah, the Mets did not win. The Giants got to Leiter for three early runs. Charlie Hayes, RBI single, scores Daryl Hamilton. The Mets' only runs come in the seventh when Brian McCray snuck one through the right side, two-run score. Al Leiter struck out six in six, but his winless streak continues. He has not won since April the 19th. San Francisco's Rob Nen does it again, closes things out, and the Mets go on the road to San Fran, get beat 4-2. Uh, Nen gets his ninth save. Here's some more scores. Houston over Atlanta, 8-1. Bobby Bonilla, game-winning RBI for L.A. 1,000th career RBI for Gwynn today. Kerry Wood struck out eight over six. Chicago wins at Cincy 10 to one. Colorado beat, uh, beat Milwaukee two to one. And Brian Jordan went five for five and drove in four, 13 to four. St. Louis beat Florida in that game. Former Dodgers Todd Zeal and Mike Piazza made their debuts. And Piazza here with uh, a base hit, RBI. He was one for five in the 13 to four loss. All right, coming up next, Sunday in golf. We'll check in with the Tiger Woods looking for his uh, Byron Nelson title, the one he won a year ago, trying to get it back. And another uh, golf tip from Tom Smack tonight. And we'll be here from the Times Union. We'll look back at yesterday's 123rd running of the Preakness Stakes. It's all next on the 30-minute edition of Big Board Sports. Big Board Sports is brought to you in part by Klein's All Sports, featuring Nike. All right, golf, the golf store tonight, final round of the uh, PGA Byron Nelson Classic from Irving, Texas. The defending champ it was Tiger Woods, and he would make a run today. This is out of the, uh, on 15, out of the rough, and right up close. 67 for Tiger, but he would still finish seven strokes back of the winner. John Cook, who started the day four strokes down, and went on to uh, win the Byron Nelson class. And he did it for a great final nine. Here at 13, the key shot rolling down in close to the hole. And then at 16, this birdie puts him in a tie with the, uh, the leading major for the women this week, the LPGA Championship in Wilmington, Delaware. 20-year-old Sari Pak completed her wire-to-wire -wire round with a final round, 68. Pac finished 11 under for the tournament. Three shots ahead of uh, Donna Andrews and Elisa Hankey. 20-year-old uh, Pac is the third youngest rookie to win a major and the first since Lisa Lott Neumann did it 10 years ago. Meanwhile, speaking of golf, Tom Smack with another in a series 
of his Sunday tips. Okay, today we're, we're in the sand trap right next to the green. We've got about a four and a half foot bank in front of us. With the pen cut kind of short, we only got about 25, 30 feet of green to work with. What you've got to be careful with with this shot is make sure that you don't decrease the loft on your sand wedge. Open the blade of this sand wedge up and play the ball just off your left end step of your left heel. Okay, we want to make sure the blade is open. We choke the club just about an inch. Make sure the blade is open, the, the club is open, the ball is positioned up off the left foot. A nice upright swing, follow through, a nice soft landing on the green, and we're up there about three and a half, four feet from the hole, we can get that par. Next week again, we're going to be using that short game, trying to get those strokes down. The short chip shot just off the fringe, we're going to be using the six iron. All right, thank you much, Tom, and don't forget to join me uh, Wednesday nights, 8.05. We go around the green. It's a half hour of golf talk locally and nationally on Big Board Radio Sports on AM 590 WROW. For the second straight year, a Bob Baffert train horse has a chance to win the Triple Crown, and we hope it happens. Last year it was Silver Charm, it did not happen this year. It's real quiet. Real quiet, the Kentucky Derby winner came charging down the stretch yesterday to hold off victory gallop in the freak mistakes at Pimlico in Baltimore, setting the stage for a possible Triple Crown in three weeks at Belmont. Once again, our handicapper, Tim Wilkins of the Times Union, not only picked the winner, but he had the first two. I've been on real quiet bandwagon ever since February. I mean, I've, he was like he was my derby horse, and I really liked him going into the Preakness. Even though I think he would have beaten Coronado's Quest had Coronado's Quest gone. Um, not taking anything away from that horse, but that horse can be, you know, he's, the way he acts sometimes he's nuttier than a Snickers bar in the in the pre-race stuff. And I mean, I just felt real quiet is a game game racehorse and I was shocked that she got two to one odds on him. I thought he was going to be nine to five. I just don't think there's any animal out there that can run this horse down and I think he's going to be even tougher at a mile and a half. I mean I think he's your triple crown winner without a doubt. I'll be shocked if he doesn't win the triple crown now. Mm, sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Thank you Tim. Here at home the Albany Colony Diamond Dogs are close to Opening a new season, the start date, May 29th, Heritage Park against the Catskill Cougars. The team actually started practice yesterday under new manager Charlie Sullivan. Dogs have made the championship three years in a row. They won it back in 1996. Six local players from the Capital Region certainly adds to it, starting with uh, John Mueller and then Joe Mariano and Chuck Bauer and Ken Legault and Mark Lavinia and Eric Sparks. 29 players. Probably cut down after a week or so to 21 or two. And uh, I like our team. I've always liked our team. And relative to previous years, I really like this team. It's awfully early to tell right now. You know, we have a lot of a lot of new guys coming in, a lot of new faces. Of course, we have a new coach. And there's a, a lot of different people that are going to be filling in for some spots that, uh, you know, we had some key people there last year that have left. So, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell right now. We're just think some of the guys that have come back, you know, have it on their mind. The first thing that Juan Williams said to me, said to me this year when I saw him the other day was, we're going to win that this year, you know, we're going to win that back this year. So, you know, we've been in the finals every year. You know, we've, our winning percentage is, is, is very high. You're gonna, if you want to come and root for a local team that's going to uh, give you a lot of success and give you something to root for, it's a great thing to come out to see. And you can watch for a weekly Sunday night Diamond Dog reports here on Big Board Sports. Up next, qualifying runs for next Sunday's Indy 500. We'll also hit the local tracks, both the Valley and Albany, Saratoga, and our weekly version of Bird Blitz. This week, wide receiver defensive back Greg Hopkins is in as the Birds are now perfect 3-0. Oh, they're going okay. The birds keep right on a roll and 3-0 and now after last night's 56-30 win over the San Jose Sabercats. Welcome to Birds Blitz. Let's roll the highlights. Carl, get us set for a night in the cage. And Eddie Brown continues to be one of the go-to guys. Eight catches, 128 yards, three touchdowns, just 16 points shy of 1,000 for his career. Defense, though, has been, I think, the story. Greg Hopkins had two picks. This one for the touchdown, and then Joe Jacobs had two sacks, a safety, and was named the game's Iron Man, and the Albany Firebirds are rolling 3-0 after a 56-30 spanking of the Sabercats. We played a 
whew, an ugly game, but a win is a win. Uh, there's some things we got to work on, but 3-0, and so you know, there's a lot of things to be thankful for. So we're just going to go back and work hard and continue to just uh, win. Guys are, are fitting into the offense. Guys are getting their assignments, doing things right. The offense is still moving the ball. So, you know, we had four turnovers tonight, and we still won pretty handily. So I think they were looking good on offense. Yeah, still spanked them, that's for sure. No problems at all. Greg Hopkins joins us in studio tonight for our weekly edition of uh, Birds Blitz. And, Greg, welcome to our program. Thanks for having me. And now your third year. Third year. Third year and feeling and looking very comfortable out there. Uh, I feel comfortable. I'm comfortable with the system now. And with Mike and I being roommates, we, we work pretty well on the field yeah, together. You guys are going out to the golf course tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're right, you are. You've got the good camaraderie going. Mm -hmm. This offense just... Uh, seems to be unstoppable and has been for a long time here but even this year with the with uh, Mike Hohensey as the offensive coordinator you're just rolling out there yeah especially with Mike coming back this year as the offensive coordinator he's so much more intense and focused on the offensive game plan before as a head coach he had a lot of uh, managerial duties to do to take care of and took his mind kind of off of the offensive job not that he didn't do a good job yeah, then sure. he did but now he's so much more focused, and our game plan is, is really coming together on offense. Uh, I heard Eddie remark that they're ugly. Um, I get, it was a slow start. What was said at halftime? What did you do? Just uh, just crank it up a little bit more? What was yeah, said? We, we stumbled out of the blocks coming the, the first half of the game. But going into halftime, we got a little chewing out by oh, Coach Oh, you did? Taylor. Mike got a yeah. fired up? <laughs> he got fired up, and it uh, kind of opened everyone's eyes. And we... We kept our composure in the first half. We knew what we had to do, but I think we had to have someone tell us what to do. I guess it's nice to maybe not play your A games. And I guess the New Jersey would have to say was the A game, but I don't think your first game was, and, and last night probably wasn't the A game, and yet you're still winning. That, 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 that must say something about the talent on this ball club. Yeah, 3-0, and you can't complain. Uh, the talent on this team is by far the best we've had in yeah. a few years here. Uh, we work well together. Uh, Character-wise, we're, we're a lot better off than we were before. Uh, years before, we've had problems with uh, conflict on the team, guys uh, pointing fingers when mm -hmm. things weren't going our way. Uh, Coach Daly summed it up best the other day. He said, uh, winning is the glue that, that bonds our team together. And with three and and you can't complain there. One thing that uh, Mike Pulaski has alluded to, and I've heard a lot of the guys talk about, and it's true now after watching this team, Defense is just so much better, and, and you've been a big part of that. What is it about this defense? A better, better guy, better, better player. We've got some good guys in there. We've got some good, two good defensive specialists in Carlton Johnson and Tommy Johnson. The pressure on the Johnson quarter. and Johnson boys. They're tough. They are tough. Uh, they they really put it on you on uh, in the secondary. The uh, receivers are are not getting open. I mean, they really got to work to get open. But then when they run a short pattern, quick hitch route. They're real conscious of the guys coming up to put a lick on. So what about you, Greg? You must like the defensive side too. You've had some picks, returns yeah. for touchdowns. Uh, Coach Fitzgerald does a good job with our defense. Uh, with my interceptions, it's it's him putting me in the right place at the right time. Uh, we run a lot of uh, cover two, where we have two guys deep in the zone coverage, and a lot of teams in Arena League take what we give them. Mm -hmm. And in the cover two defense, the weak side, short side of the field is is what's given, and and I'm doing a good job of taking yeah, that away. Sure are. You guys are doing a great job. Good luck on, on uh, Saturday home against uh, New York City and see Mike Perez back in town. What's your handicap in golf? Well, that's what I'm talking about. That. <laughs> no, I was trying to figure who's going to win between you and Pulaski tomorrow. You got it in go. You know, got a little side bet, I'm sure. There'll be a little money. So, there you go. Good I'm hoping you. to bring along a little bit. <laughs> hey, Greg, tell Mike we said hello. All and right. The rest of the guys, thanks for coming by. Tonight. Okay, thanks for having me. Greg Hopkins, wide receiver, defensive back after the 3 0 start by this Firebird team. And I must tell you that uh, Wednesday we'll talk Firebird football on the radio side as uh, the Daily Dose. Mike Daly joins us every Wednesday. We're on between 7.05 and 7.30. Tomorrow night, uh, Pete Williams joins us and we go inside baseball. He's from Baseball Weekly at 7.05 to 7.30, all on AM 590 WROW. Those are the numbers to call on your screen, and we hope to uh, hear from you during the course of the week. When we come back, the Sunday edition of Wyland's Wacky Wonders, the latest on the upcoming Indy 500, and we'll look back at a Friday night at uh, Albany Saratoga Speedway next on Big Board Sports. Welcome back. I'm Roger Watt. And Indy's traditional two-weekend qualifying format has been trimmed two days with the entire 33 field set this weekend at the Indy Motor Speedway. And Billy Boat, 
Car number 11, he's got the pole with a speed of 223. Uh, rookie, 22-year-old Jimmy Kite, who crashed here in qualifying yesterday, had the fastest uh, qualifying time on day two, that was today, 219. He took that honor away from uh, Indy 500 champion Ari Leyendijk and former motorcycle champion Jeff Ward. Kite, one of the eight rookies in the lineup for the 82nd running. Leyendijk, who was on the pole last May, will start 28. First of 1.4 million, up for grabs at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the Winston. That's NASCAR's version of the all-star game and the winner's only field for the 70-lap event in Concord, North Carolina. Final lap, what happened? Well, Jeff Gordon in the lead, and then he runs out of gas. It's calculated, opening the door for Mark Martin and the $257,000 winner's paycheck. On Friday night, Albany Saratoga Speedway presented the popular Empire Super Sprint. Tim Kelly took the, the uh, checkered flag. Don Ackner got the first win of the year in the modified division. May 22nd is hat night. First 1,000 fans will receive a Albany Saratoga Speedway hat. And we go to the Valley. Three wide down the front stretch last night on a restart. Number 98, Eddie Marshall goes out of control, causes a reaction with Donnie Corrales. No injuries, number of cars involved, no one hurt. And to the finish we go. Number three, Brett Hearn, he's in front. Number 115, Kenny Tremont, right behind, battling for the lead. Tremont makes one last run on Hearn in turns three and four. Didn't get it done. Hearn holds on for the win. Tremont was second. Ron Black won the Sportsman. Henry Tanner, the IMCA modified winner. And Scott uh, Goverston, the super, uh, the street stock. And the rookie winner was Ricky Duzlock. Don't forget to uh, join me on the radio side for Big Board Sports in the Pit Tuesday night, 7.05 to 8. We'll talk local and national racing with the Gazette's Tom Baji and this week's guest, Deb Williams from NASCAR Winston Cup. Finally, some of what we found to be wild and wacky in addition to some of the best plays from the week gone by. Today, how about it? David Wells, a perfect game for the New York Yankees. We hope you've enjoyed our program. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. Big Board Sports is brought to you in part by Klein All Sports, featuring Nike.